Welcome back, everybody, to the 1987 Super Mod. I'm your host, Brad Drake, and this is my AWA save. Ladies and gentlemen, I am recording this on Wednesday, February 9th, and not too long ago I received the news that retired ladies wrestler Candy Devine sadly passed away today. So let's take a couple seconds, pull up Candy Devine's profile, and uh, take a few seconds here to remember her. All right, thank you. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Candy Devine went on to be a four-time AWA Women's Champion. Uh, she was a successful ladies wrestler. She also was the Women's Champion in Windy City Pro Wrestling for a while in Chicago, and uh, she was a good hand. She knew how to work. So moving right along now to positive things, and that's our save. We are going to Green Bay, Wisconsin this evening on the second week here in September, and it's a Sunday night show. So we should be in the Veterans Memorial Auditorium, I think it's called. Let's get rolling into it. All right, we're going to go ahead and find our venue and get rolling here. We are in Great Lakes, and we're looking at, we're going to set five to 6,000. Ah, let's go four to 7,000. See, I'm learning. I'm going to find my venue first thing. <laughs> there it is, Green Bay Veterans Arena, exactly what I was looking for. We're going to have a sellout crowd tonight, folks. All right, let's take a look at any issues that may have come up. Uh, looks like it's all protege stuff, so that's good for us. All right, now somebody did request to that I should look at the higher local talent. Uh, let's do that in a second. It's the usuals that are out working for the WWF. Now, it has been a long time since I've hired local. I'm trying to remember local worker. There we go. Okay, here's our local workers. Audie Hager, who was a capable hand. Bill Beach, referee. Oh, he must have just lost his job when the WWE shut down. Wilbur Brazil, who's retired. At least he should be. He's still occasional, an occasional wrestler. There's Chris Carter. He was a decent wrestler. Dale Lewis, who we just imported not too long ago. Uh, if you remember, unfortunately, his... Um, his credentials, his titles won't show up, but Dale Lewis was one hell of an athlete. And um, if the AWA Midwest title showed, uh, Dale Lewis actually held the Midwest heavyweight and Midwest tag title quite a bit. He was one heck of a wrestler. Dark Angel, I never thought too much of him. Denny Cass is what Denny Cass was. There's Dick the Bruiser who's available because his promotion just closed. Dick the Bruiser Jr. who was awful. Dick Worley was a referee. Maybe we could bring him back. Don Kent. Doug Fisher. Doug Fisher was based out of, uh, he's in the Great Lakes here, but I think Doug Fisher was originally Canadian, I think. Jerry Graham Jr., I don't know too much about him. I don't know too much about the WWA, unfortunately. Frenchy Bernard. Greg Wojciechowski was a good wrestler. Uh, he was another one that was a legitimate wrestler. We may actually look into signing him. He wrestled as the great Wojo in uh, WWA, and he won their world heavyweight title several times. Twice. I thought it was more than that. Sorry. You know, just for the heck of it, let's see if Dale Lewis's title reigns show up. I doubt they're going to. No. Yeah, you can't import the title reigns. But we may look into getting Greg Wojciechowski because he was Vern Gagne's type. Igor Zatkoff, I don't know too much about him. James Beard, another referee. Jim Lancaster was a huge, massive guy. Uh, he made in several promotions. He had a couple stints with the AWA. 
Bunny Love, Miss Bunny Love, that was Paul Christie's wife and manager. Mohammed Syed was another one. Uh, worked WWA in other territories, as far as I know. Did some work in Canada also. Apparently, he was a tag team with Chris Carter. So if you want these two guys, you want the international freedom fighters, you got them here. There's Moose Cholak, who was uh, one hell of a wrestler, also a very good football player. He's at the end of his career at this point at 57. There's Paul Christie. Paul Christie was good. He was a real good wrestler. Paul Dose. Paul Dose is enhancement talent. And you know what? When we get done with this, let's take a note right now. We can bring him on as enhancement tan talent. Percival Friend, I don't know too much about him. He apparently was a manager. You know what? Let's look into Percival Friend. Maybe that's who we need to manage the Texas Hangman. Maybe he'd do the trick. He was in Central States. He'd probably be known. Let's make a note of that. We'll look into it. Hey, good idea, whoever made this suggestion. Real good idea to uh, check this out. Rex King. We all know who Rex King is. He went on to become one a part of Well Done, I believe. Uh, I think so. I think he was part of Well Done. Rex King was a was a good wrestler. Ah, uh, was he? Was Rex King Well Done? I think so. Sam Diamond, another referee. Terry Demore, another referee. Terry Sullivan was a was a uh, an announcer for the WWA. There's the Sheik. The Sheik is retired at this point. I don't quite know why he's showing up then if he's retired, but okay. Wilbur Snyder. Big WWA guy and also former AWA World Tag Team Champion. And Yurdy Gordienko, who was originally on the AWA roster, but I dropped him at the beginning. I really didn't have a place for him. There wasn't uh, much use for him. He was another one that was a Canadian guy that uh, posed as a Russian. Big, massive guy, though. Gordienko was a big dude. All right. So we're not going to use any of those people, but we are going to sign that enhancement talent. We may look into signing Rex King, too. But, uh, yeah, let's look into signing Rex King. And I'll get you an answer on that for the next time. Let's take a look at our card here. The sheet one here is a double. That's what I use to lay out our touring schedule. So I can delete sheet one. Okay, here we are. We're starting off with Medusa Michelli versus Vivian Vishan. Remember that this week is all fresh matches. This is a fresh rotation. So we get to see how everybody works together. Now we have Medusa Michelli going out first here out of respect because Vivian Vachon is a former AWA Women's Champion. I'm going to leave that one open-ended. We'll see who wins. This is uh, another pretty cool thing I got going on this tour is I got some mixed-up tag matches here just to have some fun. So we're going to have Cactus Jack and Buddy Wolf Versus the Assassin and Steve Olsonowski. This match is not going to have much in the way of speed, that's for sure. <laughs> There's Buddy Wolf. There's Assassin. There's Steve Olsenowski. Again, we're going to leave this one open-ended. We're leaving these open-ended for the most part because we're not concerned about who's winning. It's a tour. 
Uh, but what we will do is continue what we've done before and keep an eye on things to see if it starts going too one-sided. Then we'll make sure to interfere to make sure the other side gets some wins to try to even things up. Next, we're going to have Mike Graham versus Alan West. This is kind of a strange clash here. Graham was a much smaller wrestler than Alan West, but I thought it wouldn't be a bad thing since Mike Graham has so much experience and Alan West is a young wrestler. So there we go, Graham versus West. We leave that one open as well, 12 minutes. Now we're going into the 14 match part. Sonny Rogers versus Nelson Royal. We've stated this before, Nelson Royal is in his mid-50s already at this point. Sonny Rogers is pretty much in his prime here at 35. We'll see how these two pair up and what kind of matches they can put on. We are going to have Nelson Royal take the win. We're not ready for him to lose the title yet. Sonny Rogers may be the man to take the title from him, but then again, he may not. We're going to have the terrorist, Jack Victory, versus Greg Gagne. By rights, this should be an easy Greg Gagne win, but we're going to leave that one up to the computer. If they put uh, if they put Jack Victory over Greg Gagne, that'd be pretty awesome. We'll see what happens. I, I remember uh, about four years ago, I first rediscovered TEW again. Uh, I, I played this game back in like 2001, 2002, and back when it was Total Extreme Warfare Revenge. I had no idea that the game even still existed. So I just happened to look it up one day on YouTube, and I see this video. This guy's doing like the 1987 save in the 2016 version, and he's got he keeps uh, he did several cards, and he kept making Greg Gagne lose, <laughs> and he got like really mad. <laughs> And I forget how bad it got, but it got really bad. But every single show this guy had, he had Greg Gagne getting beaten in squashes. And I, I don't know why it was so funny to me, but it, it still just cracks me up. And because, uh, like, that's really going to happen with uh, with Vern Gagne still in charge. But anyway, this this guy kept, kept having uh, Greg Gagne lose. And he was doing all these voices, too, where he's like, yeah, and after he lost, Greg Gagne's going to walk back and be like, why am I losing? <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely hysterical. Okay, we got a big match here when Dick Slater battles Wahoo McDaniel. If you remember, we have a feud going between Von Rotschke and Bobby Duncan, and these two are also attached to that feud. So it could lead to some TV matches for us, TV tag matches, and it's just a good way to keep keep this thing going. Why am I losing? <laughs> oh, we're going to have the Guerrero Brothers versus Rose and Summers in our semi. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is, but I'm sure if you looked hard enough, you could probably find that video. But man, that was hilarious. But that's what re-sparked my interest into uh, TEW, because I, I didn't even know it still existed, and then I saw how awesome it was, and then I started playing it. And as you can tell, I got a little into it. I'm telling you folks, I keep working on 7.0. I keep adding um, all these extra titles and wrestlers and everything. And it is just looking great. If you are any one of the NWA promotions when you play 7.0, you'll get access to all the retired belts. And it's really cool. And I got to tell you, it has, I'll be honest with you, my thumb and forefinger are actually, or index finger are actually sore from pointing and clicking, creating belts. It, it takes forever. And a lot of those are Southern belts. And the southern 
belts would change like every week and vacate like every three weeks. So, you know, each one of those belts was like a hundred, you know, a hundred changes and just takes forever. And it was really a grind, but it's pretty cool. They're, uh, they're all in there and it's really looking good. And in our main event here, folks, at a big main event, remember this continues the Hennig and Bachwinkle feud. We are having Big Scott Hall versus Larry Zabisco. Okay, this match is going to go 25 minutes. I don't see any reason to make it go 30 minutes yet. Scott Hall and Larry Zabisco. Big main event. This is a gamble. Uh, both these men are pretty over, but I want to see what kind of score it's going to put up. Uh, you won't know till you try, so we're going to give it a shot here. We are going to have Larry Zabisco win by cheating, of course, because that's just what Larry Zabisco would do. So that match is booked. Uh oh, what's the what's the yellow of doom? Alfonso is refereeing too much. Well, let's get him changed out then. All right, everybody's happy here now. Let me double check the times here. Something doesn't seem right. Then again, I'm so used to doing the 30-minute mains. That's probably what it was. Okay, let's go ahead and get rolling. Let's see what kind of numbers we can get. Again, this is exciting. We've never done this card before. Let's see what happens. All right, Vashan goes over. Medusa Michelli. Olsanowski pinned Cactus Jack with the backflip. We got a 60 on that one. That's not bad. Cactus Jack and Buddy Wolf don't work well as a team. We're going to edit that out because both these guys need exposure and we need to keep them going together. So we're going to we're going to edit that out. All right, Graham versus West. Graham defeats Allen West. Graham gets a nice score at 64 there. This card is doing pretty well so far. This is a horrible score, 40, but we kind of expect that. Neither one of these guys are really over. So Nelson Royal wins again. Greg Gagne wins, as it should. And it says they don't click at all, and it showed in their performance. We're going to edit that out, too, because these, ter these two are going to have to work together. Slater versus McDaniel, and it only gets a 78. I figured we would have been a little bit higher than that, but we're not. McDaniel gets the win over Slater. This is one we're going to have to keep an eye on and make sure that the victories trade back and forth. But a little disappointing. I figured this one would be in the 80s, but the tell-all is going to be the next one here. That's going to control the whole card. What do you think, folks? Think we're going to push into the 80s on this one? You think we got not enough? Let's see. 75? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were in the, the semi-main already. My apologies. And look at that. I clicked on Buddy Wolf instead of Buddy Rose. That's what I get for not doing the tag team selector, everybody. Stupid. Zip right over this one. All right, the main event gets an 82. Larry Zabisco scored a high 87. Scott Hall, a 77. Let's go ahead and finish this one up. Uh, actually, let's take a look at the dirt sheet, see what the deductions were. Scott Hall, inexperienced. Fair enough. Okay, we get the gain in the region, so that's good. Uh, let's make a speech. we got to give Buddy Wolf a, a pat on the back here for doing double duty because I'm a moron. And uh, didn't take care of that properly. Let's give Scott Hall some praise. And let's give Medusa some praise. Medusa's losing a lot of matches here. Let's hope she's not losing hard on us. All right, Buddy Wolf is pleased. Look how awful that facial hair is. Do you see that? That guy's got the worst facial hair in wrestling in 1987. Now, Scott Hall's mustache is impressive. That thing's uh, very full and looking good. All right, Medusa's happy. 
Okay, so we're rolling into Monday here the next week. I think, folks, this is TV taping week. In fact, I'm pretty certain it is. And when we go back to the main screen, yes, ALF Season 2 debuts. September 21st, 1987. Awesome. I remember watching that show. It was on Monday nights. Ah, what a classic. What a classic. Well, that's the highlight of the episode right here, ALF Season 2. And yes, folks, I did put that in. All right, Scott Hall opinion. (laughs) Scott Hall is trash-talking Greg Gagne. (laughs) So we got Marty Jannetty and Scott Hall complaining to Vern Gagne about Greg Gagne. I got news for you. That wouldn't go over very well. (laughs) All right, who are we going to sign here? Shiki! Shiki's signing with us for the year. Excellent. We got Shiki signing with us. So we got some homework to do there. And uh, let's take a look, just for the heck of it, while we're here. Let's see who's available for managers. And let's go unemployed. And let's see if there's anybody better than Percival Friend for the hangman. Got to work in the USA, though, yeah. Angelo Paffo is available. He's not going to be a good fit for us. Bill Dromo. Hildebrand's very young. Bruce Pritchard. The Bear Man, Dave McKigney, who sadly would uh, pass away in just another year from this. uh, Well, we're in 1987 here. I think he died in October 88. It's when Adrian Adonis got killed and the Kelly Twins got killed. Don Carson. Don Carson is a good one. You know what? I think Don Carson is a good fit here. And I just learned something new by reading that. And I need to do this for the title editing. Don Carson was path of the medics. Ah, it was the Florida version. That's like that that's not gonna matter to me. Yeah, it might. I'll I'll check it out. I'll see if they're on the Florida tag title history. We'll get that updated. Don Carson. Don Carson might be a good fit. Gene Anderson, I think, is out of the business here. Jackie Fargo's out. Joyce Grable was still wrestling. We don't need her as a manager. Albano retired on us. That's right. I added Ron Wright into the game. Uh, Ron Reiter, Ron Reiter, Don Carson. Either one could make this happen. Let's see, Ron Wright or Don Carson? Let me think about that one. We're going to see about it. As a matter of fact, ah, I'm going to think about it. I think Ron Wright would have been too Southern. He had that real hillbilly accent. Don Carson's from Texas, so it would make sense if he was managing the Texas hangman. Let's give Don Carson a contract. Let's give him a shot. Just going to go with a handshake deal. No iron claws. We're going to give him a per show deal. One year. To be with the hangman. And your role, Don, is going to be exclusively a manager. Let's give it a shot. Let's see if he goes for it. That's, uh, That's a good find. Okay, we'll take a quick look at what's going around. Hercules over Nikita in a first blood match. Wow. Hercules would have had to worked hard in that one because Nikita looked like a million dollars but uh, was not very good in the ring. So Nikita Koloff must have come in as a baby face. Rick Root over a jobber. This is a pretty awful card again. And they still got an 83 and they still sold out. Hey, good for them. They're making it happen. 
NWA. A lot of enhancement talent being used in this one, too, is 64 overall. They did not sell out in Texas. Again, this is the problem with this uh, less than and tour. So that's that's a shame. Continental we're in a match here. Well, I think that that'll go ahead and uh, tally us up for this one, folks. I'm excited to see what happens here with Don Carson. And he could help the uh, the Texas Hangman. That, that could be what we were looking for. So we'll see if he signs with us. And if, from the way it's looking here, the next time I'm going to see you on this show is going to be a TV taping. Another big TV taping from Minneapolis. Although we may take a look and see. Maybe we'll do the filming out of Las Vegas. But we got to see if we can fill the arena. I don't like to run arenas unless I can sell them out. To me, it's just a waste of your money. So, with that said, again, everybody, I am thrilled that you are enjoying this series. I get emails every day asking for links to the mod. I get feedback emails. I really appreciate it. I try as hard as I can to respond to you and also respond to you in the comments. So if you have any questions or suggestions or anything, please drop a comment or go ahead and email me. If you want the mod and you're not playing it already, and you should be, contact me at braddrake.net slash contact. Also, you can join in conversation with us on Facebook, facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 supermod. That's facebook.com slash groups slash 1987 supermod. Folks, if you haven't done so already, please get like this, uh, this individual show and go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We have a new episode every day. Some episodes show our gameplay just like this. Other episodes show the nuts and bolts in creating the super mod and all the work that's going into the next edition, which is the seventh version of the super mod. So thanks again, everybody, for participating and tuning into the show today. And have a good one. And rest in peace, Candy Divine.